Today in the Joy of Editing, it's TK Friday, and it's another full edit. I'm calling this image Remnants of the Past. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. It is TK Friday, my favorite day of the week. I hope it is yours, too. Today's image comes to us by Sebastian Studzinski. I hope I'm pronouncing your name right, Sebastian. If not, please forgive me. This image is of an old pier, it looks like to me. I'm not sure where this is from, Sebastian. Please let us know in the comments section below. I'd love to know where this image was taken at. Beautiful image. Sebastian works with Hayda Filters when he's taking these images. It's really well balanced out. Uh, this is the way the image looks right out of the camera. And after I've done some adjustments in... Lightroom, it now looks like this. I used a linear profile. This was taken with a wide angle lens, 16 millimeter f16, and a 30 second long exposure, which gives us this nice water and clouds in the sky. Beautiful image. And by the way, you can download the image and the PDF notes. I'll have Dropbox links in the description below this video. Click on more to open up the description and scroll down through there, and you will find the links for the PDF notes and the image. And if you have an image you would like me to edit on a TK Friday, scroll down even further and you'll find a contact me link. Click on that link and let me know if you'd like me to edit one of your images on a TK Friday. I'd love to do that. As always, I start out in Lightroom and I don't do a whole lot of editing. Let me open up the basic panel and you can see I use the linear profile for Sebastian's camera, a Canon 60. And I basically just click on auto and then the blacks were clipping slightly so I just pulled the black point to the right just a little wee bit. For detail, I'm using a slight amount of sharp Sharpening. This was shot at ISO 100, so very minimal noise. I'm using a little bit of color noise reduction, and that's it. Under lens corrections, I always use remove chromatic aberrations and enable profile corrections. And that's all I do in Lightroom. And next, we send it into Photoshop, and I just right-click on the image, go to Edit In, and Edit In Photoshop 2024, but I'm already there. And here we are in Photoshop and ready to get started. And by the way, if you don't yet own the TK9 plugin for Photoshop, you can save 15% off the TK9 plugin for Photoshop, along with training videos. Use my promo code DK15. That gets you 15% off of everything. Not only are you saving money, but you're supporting the joy of editing with Dave Kelly when you use that promo code DK15. So thank you all for using my promo code. I really appreciate it. The first step for me is balance and contrast on the image. Now, this image is balanced out really nicely. I tried balance and contrast over the entire image, but wasn't happy with that, even though it is balanced out so nicely. So I decided to use my tried and true method of balancing out the foreground and sky separately. So step one is this. Hold your command or control key down and click on the sky selection button on either the combo or CX panel. And when you do that, you're going to save a channel out called Sky. That's pretty cool. And then hold your Command or Control key down again and now double click the Sky Selection button, which will invert the Sky Selection and save you a foreground channel. I want to save out a Midtones 3, so come up to the TK9 multi mass panel, click on the Luminosity Mask button, and click on Midtones 3. Now I only use this to protect me from clipping shadows and highlights, okay? And so what we'll do here is click this button right here, which saves that out as a channel, and I'm just gonna call this Mids 3, and we'll click OK. And now you can see I have a sky, foreground, and Mids 3. And now I don't need the multi mass panel open anymore, so we can click on the X and that'll close down the multi mass panel and we have our channel saved. We'll start by doing a balance and contrast on the foreground. So what we'll do is click this button on the multi mass panel for the color grading tool and there's our color grading tool. Next thing, find the mass calculator button in either the combo or CX panel. I'm using the combo panel. Now do this, hold your command or control key down and click on the mass calculator. And when you do that, that'll keep the mask calculator open till you close it by clicking this X. And we're going to work on the foreground, so click on foreground. Now we want to apply that foreground mask to this layer, so click this button right here and you will apply it. Now we need to also use that Midtones 3 mask. So now click on Midtones 3, and now we need to get Midtones 3 inside of this 
foreground. So to do that, click this X for intersect. And now in this layer mask, we have the foreground with a midtones three to protect us from clipping shadows and highlights. And now we can come up to the color grading tool. Now I'm going to start out with midtones. So I'll click on the midtone button. And what I want to do is open up the midtones, lighten them up. And I'm going to come right here to 30. Now I also want to give a little bit of color grading here. Just I just want to go a little bit of blue. It'll make that water look a little more on the blue side. So I'm going to click about right here. And see how that water just gets a little more blue. That's pretty nice. Now we're going to go to shadows. So click on the shadows button. And I just want to darken down the shadows a little bit. Not too much to like right here. And now we're going to go to highlights. So click on the white button. And we're going to drag this to the right. And I'm going to open it up to like right there. So let's check it out. Here is my before. And here is my after. And we're already off to a really nice start. Now we're going to work in the sky. Now we need another color grading tool. And here's our color grading tool right here. But you see this plus. If you click the plus, you will add another color grading tool. Pretty cool. And now our mass calculator is still opened up here. This time we want to work on sky, so we're going to click on sky. We're going to click this button to apply that sky to the layer mask. And now we want mids three to protect shadows and highlights from clipping. So we're going to, again, click the X to intersect. And there it is right there. And now we color grade and adjust balance and contrast. So we're going to start out with midtone. So let's click on the midtone button. Now for the midtones, I'm going to use this picker tool right here. So if you click this button right here, we could sample some of the blue color that's up here in the sky. So we'll click right here. And on the color picker, you can see there it is right there. And we'll click OK. And already the sky gets a little more on the blue side, which is really nice. And there it is right there. By the way, I don't need the mask calculator anymore. So I can click the X to close it so I can get my combo panel back. I just want to darken up the sky a little bit. So I'm going to take this slider and drag it to the left to right here, minus 18. See, it just darkens up the sky a little bit. Now we're going to work on highlights. So we'll click on the highlight button. And I just want to open up the highlights a little bit. So I'll drag this to the right to right there, plus 14. The next thing I want to do is add a little bit of color grading to these warmer tones. Now, I tried the picker and clicked in this area. It didn't make them warm enough for me, so I took an artistic license, and I decided to come right over to about here. So just hover your cursor right over a certain area, and where the point of the cursor is, when you left-click with your mouse, you'll drop in that color grade. And you see how that warm tones warmed up in the sky, which is really nice. Now here's the before and here's the after. Now if you want to look at the overall before and after, come to the combo or CX panel and click on this button. You'll see this is where we started. Click it again and this is where we're at now and I really like it. And at this point of the edit, I look at the image and start to decide what I need to do, what I need to change or fix. This water in this area here, it's kind of misty with that long exposure. It looks really nice and mysterious. So I'd like to lighten up this water in here. So to do that, I'm going to X out of the color grading tool. Nothing changes here. Now I can see my multi-mask panel. So I'm going to go for a luminosity mask. I'm going to click this button right here. It's going to be a light tone. So this is lights one. We default at lights one. Here is lights two. I get really nice separation of these light areas in here with lights two. But we could try different channels like the red channel. I'm just looking for better separation. Here's the green and here's the blue. See how the blue really separates things. The lights get a little lighter. The other areas get a little darker. And then you can go through and try like cyan. That's about the same. Here's magenta. Not as good. And here's yellow. So the best is blue. So I like the blue. We'll use blue. And now I'm going to grab a lasso tool. You can type L or click your lasso tool button. And what I want to do is just kind of lasso the area that I want to work on. And that's going to be like right up into here, around in here. So I'm just lassoing around these areas in here, just like this. And now I have a lasso. And now we're going to use this button right here on the multi mask panel for mask the mask. Now watch what happens when I click this. It isolates that area. You see that? But I want to feather that a little bit, make it a little soft on the edges. So I'm going to take this radius and move it over to right somewhere right around 5. I think it's going to be good. Anywhere right in there is good. 5.4 works. Click OK. And now we have a little soft edge, but it's only affecting that area. And now what I'll do is I'll put this to a curves adjustment layer. Nothing happens, but that mask is right there. 
And now I'm going to change this to the screen blend mode. And watch the magic in this area as soon as I click screen. It's like, ooh, it's like magic. It just lit up in there. Now let's check it out. Here is the before and here is the after. And it's a little strong, so I'm going to take this opacity and pull it back to, say, somewhere right around like 85%. So here's the before and here's the after, but see how it nicely relates us up. And now it keeps our viewer looking into this area, which to me, this is the main attraction of this image right in through here. And now when I study the image, again, I want you to come into this area of the image. That's where I want your attention to be. And the right side looks good, but the left side over here is a little bit light. So we need to kind of balance this out with this side. So we're going to darken this a little bit. Now I tried a luminosity mask and a zone mask, and I like the zone mask better, so we're going to click on the zone mask button, and we could sample some of the light tone in here. So I'm going to click right here, and the color picker, we're going to click OK. And there's the mask right there. You see the area I'm targeting? Now I can uh, work on this, refine it a little bit. So I'll take this slider, I call this the Titan slider, and I'll drag this over to the left a little bit. See how that tightens that up? And as far as lightning, I'm just going to leave it just the way it is. And now I'm going to output to a burn tool. Now this burn tool has two sides. Left side's 50% gray layer. The right side is a transparent pixel layer. You can use either side. I'm gonna use the left side for 50% gray layer. It's in a soft light blend mode. And now my brush right now is at 100%. And you can see I have a black brush. I'm gonna type my two key to get to 20%. And now I'm gonna make my brush a little bit larger here. It's a nice soft edge. And what I wanna do is just come out into here. I'm not going to lift the brush. I'm just going to paint out here, come in, never lifting the brush. I want this all done with one pass, basically. Okay, so down into here, and that darkens it. And now I'm going to start at the bottom and start to work up. I don't think I'll go the whole way up, but I'm just going to go up into here. And maybe up into here. I have not lifted the brush. Now check it out. Here is the before and here is the after. So the before and the after. So it's balancing it out. Now what we can do is I can keep painting on this again, but the other thing I can do is duplicate this layer by clicking this button right here and just double it up. See now it's twice as strong, so check it out. So here is the before and here is the after. And if this layer is too strong, we can take this opacity back. And what I'll do is I'll take it the whole way off, and then I'll just build it up slowly. See how it's just darkening it? I just want it to look natural. And I think maybe right about here. My notes will give you a little different number because I think I painted over it a couple more times. In fact, I might even just paint over this area one more time down here on that top layer. Okay. So, here's my overall before. And here is my overall after. But again, this is keeping our eyes centered right into this area. All right, then the next thing I want to do is have a little bit of fun. And this is really a fun thing to do. We've already lightened up this water, but what if we just take certain parts of this water and just add a little bit extra lightning to the areas, which will give it some more interest. And we can do that by dodging, and we can do some freehand dodging. Now, don't be afraid of freehand dodging. It's not that hard to do. But what we need to do is right now, you can see by my selection indicator, I still have a selection. So I need to deselect that selection. So on the combo or six panel, we can click this button, and now we'll deselect the selection. Because we don't want to paint through that selection. Now what we'll do is grab a dodge tool. Now we'll go on the combo or six panel. The dodge tool has two sides like the burn tool, left side 50% gray, right side transparent pixel layer. You can use either side. I'm using the left side, so I'm going to click right here. And right now, I have an opacity of 20%. That's a little high, so I'm going to type my one key. That'll get me 10%. And now with a nice soft edge brush, my hardness is at 0%. And I'm going to have a brush around this size right here. And what we're going to do is just start to paint some light areas, okay? Now, if you go crazy and you go too much like this, you know, you always have your friend right here on the Combo 6 panel. You can step back a step at a time. So if we click this once, we go back one step. Click it again, we go back two steps. Click it one more time, we go back three steps. So you can always step back if you mess up. So I'm going to go ahead and just paint a little bit of lightness in here. I'm just looking for some light areas. You don't have to hit them all. And with that 10%, we're just going to zing a little bit of light in certain areas. And you can adjust your brush size accordingly for the different areas you want to work in. 
and I might just throw a little bit up in here and down in here. I'm going to go down to 5%. So if you hold down your zero key and type your five, you'll go down to 5%. And now I'm just going to give a couple little light areas down in here. And if you lift your brush and paint again, you'll add a little bit more. But isn't that cool? We just get a little bit of nice lighting effect in here. So check it out. Here is the before and here is the after. Let me give a little bit of light right in here. I'm going to hit this a few times because I'm only using 5% right here. So again, here's the before and here's the after. And if you felt you've gone too strong, you always have your opacity that you can pull back. But don't forget about this button right here. You can step back or step forward with these two buttons. Really nice. While the video was paused, I added a little bit of light up in here too with just that 5%. I hit this a couple times here and here. So again, here's my before. And now here is the after. This just brings a little bit of drama into this area. I really like it. The key to doing freehand dodging and burning is use low brush opacity values like you know, no more than 20% for most cases. A lot of times it's only around 10, but you can also drop it down to like 5% and that'll really help you out. It won't get too out of hand for you. This might be a little too strong, so I think I'll take the opacity back a little bit. I think I'm going to take it back to like, I don't know, right around here, 78%. Here's the before and here's the after just tames it down a little bit. The next thing I want to do, and again, just to draw emphasis to this area, is do like a freehand vignette. I'm going to grab a lasso tool. I'm just typing my L. That's the shortcut key. And what I want to do is just go like this. Put like a lasso right around this area here, like that. And then if you don't have your actions open like I do, you can click the TK button. But I have a freehand vignette action, which you will as well, and click on that. And you're going to get a Gaussian blur. I just take it just the way it is and click OK. And now there's a uh, vignette around there. So check it out. Here is the before and here is the after. But you know what? That may be a little too strong. So I'm going to take the opacity and pull this back to 20%. Here's the before and here's the after. But I'm having a little issue with some of these lighter tones in here. I don't want these going darker. So what I can do is protect those with Blend If. So if I click on this Blend If button, this is for Edit Blend If. And if I click this button right here, this will protect lights too. In other words, if I click on here, it's saying do not apply to lights too. So no lights too. And now look in this area right here. I'm going to shut this off. Okay. So right now it's on. I'm shutting the blend if off. See how that got darker. And now when I turn the blend if back on, that area is lighter. So that protects it. So that's cool. So here is my overall vignette result. Here's before and here's after. Really nice. Just again, keeps us focused right in this area, right up through here. The next thing I want to do is I study the image, see some of these rocks down in here. They're a little bit light. And what I did was to select these rocks was, let me X out of my edit blend if nothing changes here. I'm going to use a color mask to select these areas because there's a lot of orange color in here. So let me click this button and I'm going to sample like a... Uh, this tone right here and click OK. And now what I want to do is I want to lighten this up a good bit to somewhere right around there. But see how it's selecting all these tones and these rocks here. That's what I want to get. And I'm going to output this to a burn tool. And again, you could use the left or right side. I'm using the left side. 50% gray layer, soft light blend mode. And with my brush at about like 20% opacity right now, it's at 5%. I'll type my two key. And then the rocks and even the posts here that I feel are too light, I can go ahead and darken just like this, just by painting over them like this. And just toning them down a little bit because they're drawing the eye. And I don't want your eye to be drawn there. And I may just darken some of these guys down a little bit in here, down over in here, just to keep our eye off of there. Let me get this one again and again, maybe this guy right here. So let's check it out. So here's the before and here's the after, but see how it just tones those down? Very nice. And if it's too strong, you always have your opacity. You can pull it back. Next, I want to work on the color in this image and I want to bring up some of the weaker colors. And so I'll use the uh, saturation vibrance mask. So we'll click on this button right here 
and we're looking for weaker colors so vibrance masks are what you want so here's vibrance one it's too strong here's vibrance two here's vibrance three last week on my edit i used vibrance three but generally it's going to be vibrance four so let's try a vibrance four that's too strong on this image so here's vibrance four and that should be good so we're going to output this to a hue saturation adjustment layer and now that is just targeting the lower saturated colors, and we're gonna bring those up. Now we don't have a lot of colors in here, mainly red, yellow, and blue. So what we're gonna do is, right now we're on master. I'll do master, but we'll do that last. Click this drop down, and we'll go to reds first. And I'm gonna bring up my reds to right here, plus 30. And now we're gonna go to yellow, so I'll click on yellows. And I wanna bring up the yellow saturation. And I think right there at 40, and now let's go to blue. So we'll go to blues and let's bring up the blue saturation. And I don't want to go too crazy, but right there at 40. So right now, here's the before and here's the after. Already a really nice improvement. And now let's go to master and bring up the master saturation. We'll start moving this to the right. And I think right here at 30. So now here is my before and here is my after. But that really helps out. So now those weaker saturated colors are now brought up. Now, just for the fun of it, let's disable this mask by clicking this X and see what it looks like without this mask to control the adjustment. It looks like this. Wow, that's way over the top, isn't it? So now when I turn the mask back on by clicking the X again, you can see how that's really protecting. And again, here is the before and here is the after. Next up, I'd like to bring out some detail in some of these areas in the pier here and these buildings back here and some of this stuff. So how can we do that? Well, we have an action. Now you can click your TK action button to open up your actions. In my case, mine are open. So I'm looking for clarity. So click on your clarity action. And what you want to do is with a high pass filter, I took mine up to somewhere right around like 40, I think it was. Yeah, it was right there and just click OK. Now that's adding clarity over the entire image and that doesn't look good. But don't forget our old friend, Edit Blend If. So let's click the Edit Blend If button. Now I experimented here. You know, I tried like lights one, you know, midtones three, darks one. And then you have these zones here, zone one, two, three, four, and five. And after experimenting, when I hit zone two, I felt that was perfect. Now check out all these wood posts, this building back here and these posts over in here and here. I'm going to shut off clarity and notice how it's only targeting those. So here's off and here's on. Pretty cool, right? Now there is a little bit of an issue. There's like a line back here in the horizon that's getting too dark and I don't like that. But we can take care of that and I'll show you how. Right now in this clarity layer, we do not have a mask. So if you click this button on the combo or CX panel, you'll add a white reveal all layer mask. And now grab yourself a black brush. So click on the black brush icon or button. And I'm using around a 45 pixel brush. And what I want you to do is make sure your opacity is at 100%. If it isn't, type your zero key. And I'll start here. Click one time. Hold your shift key down and come to the other edge and click. And see how that just goes away? That draws a straight line across. So, And then here, I'll do it again. I'll click once, hold my shift key down, and I will click right here. And that gets rid of that. And again here, I'll click once, hold my shift key down, come over to here, click again. And then here, I'll click one time. Hold the shift key down, come over here and click again. And that gets rid of that. Now study this horizon line and I'll disable this mask by clicking the X on the combo panel. So here's the mask disabled. See the line comes back and then when I re-enable the mask by clicking the X again, now the line goes away. It's a little tension to detail, but these little things really add up and I like that. Now check out all these posts in the building back here. So here's before the clarity adjustment and here's after. And I think that was really helpful. We're almost done. I'm just going to close my edit blend if by clicking on the X. Now I just want to add a basic vignette around the entire image. So to do that, you can click your TK action button to open up your actions. If your actions are open like mine are, click this top vignette button. It's just the basic vignette. And I take the radius for this just the way it is and click OK. 
It defaults at a 30% opacity. Now, here is the before and here's the after. But I want to protect my darkest darks and my lightest lights. And to do that, I'll use Edit Blend If again. So I'll click on the Edit Blend If button. To protect the whites, I'm going to click on No Lights 1 by clicking this button right here. Now, you can only click one of these buttons. You can't click two. So in other words, if I click No Darks 1, you notice that got reset, okay? If I click on this slider right here, you can see that number is 0 and 80. 0 represents this part of the slider, which can be moved as well. But this part is at 80, so remember that. So what we can do is go to No Lights 1 and click it. And then just take this slider and drag it over to 80. And now we have no darks one and now if i shut off the edit blend diff see if you can see a change in the image here is without the edit blend diff notice the corners you'll see them getting a little bit lighter when i turn the edit blend diff back on but if you want to really see what's happening if you click this double arrow right here where it's in magenta you can actually see what's happening here okay so let look at the magenta this is the area of the vignette right now notice when I, what happens to that when I shut off the uh, Edit Blend If. You see the change in the image? That's without Edit Blend If. And really study it. Now I'm going to turn Edit Blend If back on. And you can see, again, there's Off. Like look up in that corner. And now here it is back on. So you can see things changing. But it is protecting my darkest darks and my lightest lights. And then you have to click this button again to get back to the image. And this is without the vignette. And this is with the vignette. Now, I'm sure some of you have noticed during this edit, there's some dust spots like see right here and up here's another one. There's some that are harder to see. And we can use an action to help us find those. And, I'm, and I waited to the end to do this. So what we're going to do is, I'm going to X out of the edit blender for now. What I'll do is open up your TK actions if they're not open by clicking the TK button, but you're going to find clean dust. So click on clean dust. Okay. And already the image is zoomed in and you can see the dust spots a lot more clear here, right? So like right here and here. And if you need to see this layer, it says amplified dust. If you click on this, this is a um, levels adjustment that you can tweak this if you need to. But if you change this, you got to go back to this heel clone layer. And after you've cleaned up all your dust spots, then you can go ahead and click on clean dust again, and it'll clean this up and just leave the heel clone layer. So we can go here, and it gives us the tool that we need, which is a spot removal tool. So we can come here and just clean up the dust spots. And just look for all of those dust spots. Here's another one over here. If you hold your space bar down, you'll get your hand tool up and you can just study around the rest of the image because also this action zooms the image in for you so you can really see. Here's a dust spot like right here. Let's see. And I'm sure I'll miss one and I'm sure you'll say, Dave, you missed one. I know. Come on. I'm doing a video here. Sometimes I will miss something, right? But don't you miss one. You know, make sure you get all your dust spots. Let me get this dust spot down here. Okay, but we're using this hill clone layer here and everything is set up for us. Yeah, here's one right in here. Look, again, I'm going to miss one, but don't be mad at me, please. Oh, look, there's some over here. But this will really help you to see those dust spots. Okay, and let's say I got them all. I probably didn't. But then when you're done, just click this clean dust action again. And now we're left with a hill clone layer. And now we're zoomed to full size. We can really study the image. And you can click on clean dust again and do it again if you need to. But there we go. And that is the edit. Now, if I click this before after button, we started out looking like this. And now we look like this. Well, there it is, everyone. Another TK Friday draws to a close. I hope you enjoyed this full edit today. Thank you, Sebastian. For the use of this image don't forget to download the image as well as the pdf notes dropbox links are in the description below this video if you enjoyed today's tutorial please give it a like and share it with your friends and if you're not yet a subscriber to this channel please subscribe click that bell notification icon and also click all so you'll receive all notifications and then every time i upload a new tutorial you'll get notified about it I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. 
I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.